Andre, how's it going? Hey, man, it was a slow week, man. But, hey, we, we here. It's Super Bowl week this week. I can't complain. I hope your week in the family week was everything was good on y'all in, man. Hey, much appreciated. It was an excellent weekend, as you said. Uh, first weekend without any NFL action for a minute, unless, of course, you, we want to talk about the uh, rejiggered NFL Pro Bowl format. Which you know, I can't even get. Is it, was it in, in Orlando? Is that where they hold this thing? I I guess I, I didn't watch that bullshit. <laughs> exactly. Well, right. I mean, it is a far cry from the old school Hawaiian Pro Bowl that we're used to seeing happen in the Aloha Bowl. Big time shout out to Sean Taylor taking out none other than the Buffalo Bills punter Thomas Moorhead, who once upon a time was an elite hardler uh, in the track and field space. I had to learn, I looked that one up. But uh, what jumps to mind for you when you think about the Pro Bowl of old? I mean, look, man, you had the best of the best playing and they were playing to win. And You know what I mean? there was It didn't start getting soft till maybe after 20, 2005, 2006, maybe, oh, oh, I say 08 at the latest, 08. By the time 08, it started getting a little softer or whatever and after, in my opinion. So, you know, the Pro Bowl, guys of old, those guys were different kind of men. They didn't care. They wanted to prove that they were the best. They were more egotistical, and they were ready to prove that they were the best. And they played a game that didn't mean anything, but they cared because they wanted to just prove that they were the best. I miss seeing the NFL quarterback club competition when the quarterback's throwing the football right before the, the Pro Bowl game. And then you got the Pro Bowl. You got the best. You got Peyton Manning. You got Tom Brady as, as your quarterbacks. You got maybe a, 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 a Edgerin James, maybe a Larry Johnson. You got the Marvin Harrisons of the world on the AFC. With Natron. other receivers, Nat come on, Natron man. Natron means business. Has Nat oh, man, come on, man. That, that was football. And if you want to go further back, the Brett Favre and the Steve Youngs being on the same team, Jerry Rice, come on, man. Those were the golden eras of Pro Bowl. So in order to fix what we got here with this bullshit they trying to serve us, same, same way they put the in-season tournament in with the NBA, you know, the ratings, are not what they used to be, man. And, and and they just, they fishing for shit. So why don't you just put a $10 million pot? Everybody get their pay for the Pro Bowl, but there's a $10 million pot for everybody to break down on shit. Y'all bring in about 5 to $8 billion a year, NFL. Put up $20 million. You want a great product? You want a great Pro Bowl? Them guys going to go out there and play for the bag. Put up a 25 mil. The winner, everybody on the team, from the coaches that's on the Pro Bowl roster to the teammates, everybody get a breakdown of that $25 million. People going to come. They ain't going to worry about people, too many people calling out. They're going to come, and they're going to play hard, and it's going to be a meaningful football game. Make the product great again, please. I love that call. I love that call because, look, these are highly paid professional athletes. Obviously, their livelihoods depend on their health, right? Yes. They don't want to be uh, blown out a knee, blown out an Achilles tendon, you know, during an exhibition format. However, like you said, NFL clearly has got enough in the way of uh, the Scrooge McDuck bank in the back, right, to, to hook up a little bit of a creator's fund, if you want to call it that, right? Like you said, fifty million. Just put fifty. What? Million. Are you telling me they're not going to play for that fifty m? Right. What? Right. No. Look, and that makes a lot of sense too, because you know, therefore, you, you got to ensure that if anybody is injured, that somehow they're going to be covered down on, taken care of, whatever, whatever. Yeah, full compensation. Full compensation. That's more than enough. You're going to get your game pay, which you're going to make to just show up to the building. Plus, you got a twenty-five to fifty million dollar pot, which the NFL can afford. Come on, man, make the game great again. The Pro Bowl once had dignity. This is some bullshit right here that you serving us. Please get it right, NFL. 
And just a little tidbit on what you were saying about these dudes back in the day, the old school mentality of them looking to, like you said, show out, prove their skills, prove their metal, prove their toughness. There is a rumor that you can look up out there somewhere on the internet about the fact that the great John Lynch uh, of the Bucks and the Broncos and whatever, that he set the record for the poolside Mai Tai competition. And evidently, Andre, John Lynch took down 34 Mai Tais in a day. Dang. Dang, <laughs> Dang. Use the hell. Hey, listen, man. That 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 it, it, it it's almost as crazy as the stories they say about Larry Bird drinking Budweiser before and after a game. Like that was his preferred choice beverage. A uh, Budweiser, a uh, 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 just a half like a half a can of get me woozy. A uh, man, that's they were different type of guys, man. Come on, thirty four my times in a day, damn a day. Right. And I can only imagine who was like in that mix pushing him to have the 29th, the 30th, the 30. Right. Like who was there where he was like, yo, I, I got to do this. I got to take down the 34th my side just to like put myself right there. Hey, man. Thank God Donovan McNabb wasn't there because <laughs> Lord knows that's was his biggest knock. You showing up the NFC championship games the night after you was drinking and partying, dummy, and then you want to be barfing on the fucking football field. But that's a whole nother conversation where I, I ain't even going to go there. I don't want to open old wounds. You feel me? That's exactly right. And we're going to talk a little Eagles later in the program here. So given that it is Super Bowl week, right, media day, we got like the players all kind of trying to set up like little deal with this company, little appearance on this show, whatever. You know, one of the um, dialogues and narratives that it has been popping up lately has been, is uh, the Kelsey family. So Jason, Travis, and of course, they got a little boost happening right now from Taylor Swift, whatever, you know. Uh, are the Kelseys at this point in time more famous than Patrick Mahomes? I don't know. But here now, because I just thought about this, I told you earlier. I don't know if they more famous than Mr. State Farm himself. He done took Chris Paul title. That was Chris Paul's. It's Pat Mahomes now. Jackie. He's the State Jackie. Farm agent. So I don't know. But when you look at what Taylor Swift generated the NFL, having a fan base that really wasn't watching football, they come tap in for Kansas City Chief games because she there, just because she there, just because the camera going to have her on for like, Every catch Kelsey make, they watch that just because they want to see Taylor reaction. That generated three hundred and thirty million dollars for the NFL. Come on, are you serious? Just to see a quick couple of cameos of Taylor Swift, her fan base. Okay, I now I gotta think. Of, I, I don't know, man. I don't know, man. Because it's Pat Mahomes. They already giving him the goat title already. Already, we're we're putting him in the conversation as a, the goat. So, can that supersede the Swifties and you know? I mean, Travis Kelsey got a fan base, but it's nowhere near Pat Mahomes and Taylor Swift. But Taylor Swift is a whole entity of its own, and you wife in her. That's your lady. So you inherit all of that. So you know what, man. I don't know, man. I'm going to say it's a tie for me. I don't know. Man, just by having Taylor Swift might give him the edge, man. man if, if Pat Mahomes was the, you know what I mean, if he wasn't in a situation that he was in and he was to have somebody that has, you know, has the star power as Taylor Swift, then, you know, that would be a whole different conversation. But because, you know, Travis Kelsey is considered one of the top five tight ends in football. He's a football great. He will go down as a Hall of Famer. And you got one of the top artists, if not the top artist, in the game next to Beyonce and, you know, Adele and all those type of individuals, you know. That, that, that's a hell of a feat, man. So I don't know. I might have to backtrack and say it's, it might be a tie for me. 
Okay. I, I mean, I look, that's fair because one, like you said, we are talking about this guy, Patrick Mahomes, who went for, uh, from somebody that like people had very big doubts about coming out of Texas Tech. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, like you said, nothing for this guy goes left. He just seems to always make the right play. Oh, God. You never hear about him ever having any kind of distractions or anything like that. He just balls. This guy just balls. And he makes these guys around him better. I mean, I don't think it's Taylor Swift doing it. But last week or two weeks ago, uh, Travis Kelsey was 11 for 11 in terms of catching. I points. told you I, last week's show. You saw her 11 times. Watch. However many catches Travis Kelsey get, you're going to see Taylor Swift. And just think about that. That generated the NFL $330 million. Just because she there. And she get a quick couple of cameos. You think the NFL ain't happy about that? They milking that shit too. I promise you, you're going to get a healthy dosage. Of Taylor Swift this week at the Super Bowl, oh, you yeah. will see a lot of her. Oh, we generating three hundred and thirty. Let's let's throw her up there five more times. You know what I mean? Come on, man. And look, I'm not real big in conspiracy theories. You know, I, <laughs> I tend to think that the romance between you know Travis and uh, Taylor is legit. I mean, he's got to be a charismatic dude. She's a she's an attractive gal, but a lot of people are saying that they're like a made up couple. Put together by some think tank somewhere deep inside the U.S. government. We'll see about that. And, and look, I, I I I used to think about stuff like that. Like, can 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 they actually advise people to become couples? And when I look at somebody like a Jennifer Lopez, Jenny from up the block and around the corner and the back block and all over the place, you Why know, what I mean, I, I mean that's by choice of nature. So I'm going to say they they whatever drew them to each other it was genuine it wasn't forced I don't think Taylor Swift pulled out her Kardashian book and looked down the player list name at the as the next victim you know what I mean once you mess with the Kardashians you don't leave right you don't come back correct I mean my boy Lamar Odom he had his issues you know, I don't even want to go there. You know what I mean? Shout out to Ella, one of the legends, man. New York basketball legend. But them Kardashians, they bad. They no good. So I don't think Taylor Swift went about it like that. I think they genuinely enjoy each other's company. They care about each other. Blah, they blah. They said, let's try this thing. Let's work it out. Let's see where this go. And, you know, they an item. They a couple. Until otherwise. Until otherwise. Until otherwise. And not to uh, rabbit hole too deep down a music industry uh, dialogue here, but you got to also shout out Jay-Z for probably one of the all time speeches given at an award ceremony. Right. And I loved him qualifying some of these things where he says, well, he just gets honest when he's nervous or whatever he said about people that shouldn't be in the category or whatever. But that was, an all-time speech by Jay-Z. That was a smooth way of forcing a gripe versus when Kanye West took that microphone out of Taylor Swift's hand and he said, "I, I he's like, I, excuse me, excuse me, Beyonce should have won Video of the Year Award. You know what I mean? And, and because of that, Taylor Swift going to go to her grave hating Kanye West. She, it's going to be like 50 Cent and Ja Rule 50 and Rick Ross, Taylor Swift hate Kanye West guts because of that. And on the runway, if you saw him with Amber Rose, he did have a big ass model, a Henny. And that thing was half full when he was on the carpet. So he was lit that day. But Jay Z did it on a smooth, jigger type move, you know. He wanted to address that, that, you know, the elephant in the room. Yes, Beyonce won 33, uh, uh, I mean, Oscars, 33 uh, uh, Grammy Awards. So out of all them 33, she don't got no best album of the year. None of them got album of the year on it. We're talking about Queen B. The Queen, True. she don't got an album of the year. 
how they do that? So, you know, I always been questionable of the Grammys. For me, I have my own personal reasons, just like a lot of people view the Grammys and the way they view their, 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 their criteria of meeting the standard of being qualified and getting a Grammy award. So I always was not too keen on how they do that. I mean, look at the year, uh, 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 what's the guy name won the award, man? Over Kendrick Lamar, over the best album, Good Kid, Mad City. What's the guy name? You don't even hear that. I haven't heard from him in a minute. He probably still has poor fan base tapped in. But he even said he shouldn't have won best rap album of the year. Mac Lamar, that's his name. Mac Lamar won best album of the year over Kendrick Lamar. Are you serious? Come on, man. Yeah, no, no doubt. It, it, there's a lot of things <laughs> that, make, that make you scratch your head, right? Okay. Yes, sir. So we're going to pivot a little bit now into some Eagles related uh, topics. Obviously, uh, Jason Kelsey, somebody that has uh, been front and center since the Eagles exited from the playoffs. He had an A plus performance in Buffalo, shirt off, wife trying to pull him back into the VIP box, you know, <laughs> right? Doing it proper like a local in Buffalo. And then uh, recently he was basically, I want to say, like team captain or whatever for all these things happening for the Pro Bowl. So first question here regarding the Eagles, is Jason Kelsey coming back? What do you hear? I, I pray. I pray he do. I hope Jason Kelsey give us one more year. And I can understand why, you know, you contemplate retirement. You're playing offensive line. That is the most physical, grueling position to play when you're on the line, defense, or offense. Because it's automatic contact. Blows to the head, concussions, all that type stuff. You got to take that into consideration with the CTE and all of that going on with the brain and stuff. We seeing past football players come down with cases of CTE. Listen, man, th that, that's something you got to really think about. But I also know Jason Kelsey is a full-blown competitor, and he loved the city of Philadelphia. And I think he feel like he might have one more left in the tank. Even if he decided to retire, he had a great career. He was a part of the team that won the, the Eagles' first Super Bowl. He was a part of that. That was a hell of an experience. He's a made man in Philadelphia. But if he decide to come back, I like what we have potentially and what we could do in the draft and in free agency to add to our team, to get back into the thick of the NFC picture being the representative to go to a Super Bowl again. I want Jason Kelsey back. If he want to come back, thank God. If he don't, we got Cam Jurgens. He mentored Cam Jurgens. He handpicked Cam Jurgens. He had some input on drafting Cam Jurgens in the draft out of the second round. So look, man, it 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 definitely it definitely it'll pain me to see him go, but I I would understand it. But me, I want him back. One more year, man. The way we went out, we got to we gotta redeem ourselves, man. That's exactly how it feels. And the Eagles, I think, have already made some strong first kind of set of moves. Caleb Moore, offensive coordinator. Vic Fangio, defensive coordinator. We're going to also talk about the draft sort of uh, uh, strategy here. But how do you like Caleb Moore or Vic Fangio coming in as uh, uh, the coordinators? Caleb Moore is a great offensive mind. You know what I mean? He he took the Dallas Cowboys offense to the, in the regular season. They were one of the top offenses in the game. Then they had their collapses in the playoffs. And the knock on him was he couldn't run the ball. That's why Mike McCarthy wanted to be the play caller, and he wanted him out, and they gave him the opportunity. So what did Kalen Moore do? He went to the Chargers. You know, they, they always hurt, man. The Chargers get hurt more than anybody I ever seen, and they have premium top tier talent, but guys can't. They just can't stay healthy. And at this point, I would question the sports science or whoever runs the the training staff. I need a brand new training staff or something. Uh, they just can't stay healthy, so they couldn't really show what. I mean, the first couple of games, they showed what they could do. They were explosive offense, but everybody started getting hurt. Mike Williams went down. Uh, 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 you got offensive linemen that was getting hurt. They, it just, it was bad, man. It was bad. It's bad. So I, I, I like, I like Kalen Moore though. 
I just need you to continue to run the ball, Kalen. But I know with them offensive plays, passing plays, you're A1. You're going to definitely help Jalen Hurts get back to Jalen Hurts level football that we know and love here in Philadelphia. And as far as Vic Fangio, I love that we got him. Like I spoke to you earlier, I wish we would have kept Denard Wilson. Instead of hiring Sean Desai, I would have rather kept Denard Wilson when we had the best backfield, defensive backfield in the NFL last year. And he left because we didn't. he didn't get the D.C. job. He went to Baltimore. They had the best defensive back rating this year in Baltimore as well, or one of the top three. And he just got a defensive coordinating job. That's who I wanted. But Vic Fangio, old school mindset. He definitely had the Dolphins defense turned up. They they had a lot of key injuries this year, but they played great. Christian Wilkins, Jalen Ramsey came back. He still looked like the Jalen Ramsey of old. But look, I like I like it. I like what we got. We just need to go get some linebackers, and we need some another corner. But you know, I like I like the I like the hirings. I, I'm definitely happy. I'm confident. I'm very confident in what we got. Absolutely. I mean, I, I love hearing that because, you know, from a Eagles fans perspective, when I look at both sides of the football for this team, I'm telling you, when I look at the offense, you're like, all right, hey, there's not a lot of holes there, right? O-line is good, right? Maybe they could add another receiver or something like that. But yeah. I like DeAndre Swift. Obviously, Jalen Hurts is one of the premier guys at his position. So it's like, I mean, would you basically invest 90% of your draft capital in the defensive side of the football? I need to. I mean, we got everything we need. We have Dallas Goddard, when healthy, is a top five tight end in the entire NFL, in my opinion. Uh, we got a great offensive line. We have, in my opinion, one of the top three receiving cores, just A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith alone, we need to get that defense shored up. The Eagles, they, they, this, they've been doing this since Joe Banner and Andy Reid was run, running the show in the NFL, I mean, for the Philadelphia Eagles. They don't invest in the middle linebacker or linebacking positions, period. That's why Jeremiah Trotter bounced, left us, go to the Washington uh, Redskins at the time, he got cashed out. He was back with us a year or two right after he got that big deal that he didn't get with the Eagles originally. So they don't invest in to the, the linebacker position. But this year, after seeing what those shitty linebackers did for us, the the the, the Nick Morrows, the Zach Cunninghams, Darius Leonard on a bad back, N'Kobe Dean, he light in the ass. He get nicked up from time to time. He got skills. But he's a small body. We need to go get a linebacker. Please, Howie Roseman, whatever cap space you got left, please go get Patrick Queen. Go get Patrick Queen. Go get Levante uh, David. What's his name from Tampa Bay? The linebacker from uh, Tampa Bay, I believe his name. David. Levante David. Levante David, David for sure, yeah. Yeah, I, bring him. Or go get Patrick Queen. And it's going to be very expensive to go get Patrick Queen. But if I'm the Philadelphia Eagles, I need a linebacker. And if you choose not to get a linebacker through free agency, please go get Jeremiah Trotter's son. Go get him. He was a Clemson linebacker. Pure beast. Has the same traits his daddy had. He will drop the hammer on you. He covers great. He's a quarterback of a defense and we desperately need a quarterback on defense. We ain't had a good, a good linebacker since Jordan Hicks who won a Super Bowl with us. We drafted him in the third round. He would have been a first round pick, but he had knee injuries and shit. So he slid to the third round and he actually was a great player, but we don't invest in a linebacker position. We need a linebacker and I need Bradbury to fuck out of here. I don't want to see James Bradbury. It, it just, you know, it is James Bradbury is equivalent to a heifer. Like the easy chick, when everybody want to go and get the sloppy seconds or something, that's how they treat Bradbury. All the receivers know, I'm going to have a big day today. I got James Bradbury on me. We have to fix that. Khalid Ringo showed me something. When he was on the field, as time progressed, when Darius Slay was out, 
He played good. I want to see more Kali Ringo. And if you got to draft another quarterback, this will be a cornerback rich draft. There's guys for you to go out there. Kool-Aid McKinstry, uh, d- just the name one off top. There's cornerbacks out there for you to get. Kalen King from Penn State. There's cornerbacks to go get in this draft. Please don't leave empty-handed. Focus on the defensive side of the football for free agency and the draft. No doubt. Uh, Terry and Arnold, player out yes. of Alabama. Yes. That- that's a guy that I, I can see the the Eagles, uh, you know, being able to utilize the right way. Um, uh, as you also said, Kool-Aid, that's a guy that I think, you know, he plays a little bit more physical of a style. I think that he can, they can move him around, you know, get, get, get them a, like a, a, a chess piece in the defensive backfield who can kind of step into the box once in a while. Absolutely. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm, I'm excited for the Eagles because I just, like you said, it feels like, they still are that 10 and one team that just went to the Super Bowl. It really does, right? Like that's basically what this past season was. They were 10 and one, winning some close games, you know, could have had the Super Bowl ring from the year prior. Great offensive line. They just need to pour resources into that defensive side. Not just that, Sean Desai was horrible. Then you go from that to Matt Patricia. What the fuck has Matt Patricia done since he was in New England? He's been sharpening that pencil, man. That's yeah, all I know. Yeah, just that damn pencil. Get him the fuck out of here, man. And th- you, and then you got Brian Johnson. We go from what's the head coach name? Shane from the Colts. What's his Tyken. name? I'm Tyken. And there you go. We go from that to Brian Johnson who has no coordinator experience. And he's a godfather to Jalen Hurts, if I'm not mistaken. Get him the fuck out of here. I'm happy they're going. That was the issue, brother. That alone. And we got injuries and stuff like that, but not investing in the linebacker position hurt us. Absolutely. That, hurt. that hurt, man. Like, like you said, you don't have a quarterback of defense, you know, by the third, fourth quarter – you're going to find a lot of people starting to freelance, doing their own thing, going off script. And that and that's how you have coverage breakdowns, bad bad run gap fits, so all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, no, I think that the Eagles will be back. Uh, I like their opportunity to replenish talent. And like you said, guys like Keely Ringo, I mean, he was a five-star coming out of high school in Arizona, going to Georgia. He's, a, he's an athlete. I think he tip-tocked like a 4-3 whatever high in the 40s. So they got talent. They got talent to make this this next uh, season happen. Okay, yeah. switching into the prediction phase of the program here. We're predicting the ultimate game of the season. It's been a great year of predictions. Listen to Mr. West Philly Hippie always nail the prognostication correctly. So we got Patrick Mahomes, the next GOAT to be, facing literally Mr. Irrelevant, who is a slow starter, Brock Purdy, in a lot of these games as well. So how do you like this prediction shaking out? I'm going to switch up my score. I said originally 26-20, but now I'm going to go 27-23, 49ers over the Chiefs, man. Wow. Okay. 27-23, betting against Patrick Mahomes, Mr. West Philly Hippie. They say that it could not and should not be done. Prognostication on this program always proves to be correct when Andre says lock it in. So lock it in. 27-23 Niners over the future GOAT. Andre, as always, thank you for tapping in. Thank you for the education. And we'll do it again next week. All right, brother. We'll do it again next week, man. Hey, you enjoy your week. You too.